Welcome back viewers. If you are curious about the evolving landscape of Islam in Denmark, this article offers a comprehensive exploration of the recent dynamics and controversies that have shaped the narrative from the unsettling incidents of Quran burning to the contentious debates surrounding headscarves and the religious practices. Denmark has become a focal point for discussions on anti-Muslim sentiments and its implications. Delving into these multifaceted issues, this article navigates the intricate intersections of culture, identity, and societal changes that are reshaping the relationship between Islam and Danish society. Anti-Muslim nationalism is surging in Denmark, where the focus of political discourse has shifted towards controversial issues. Parliament has engaged in discussions about prohibiting prayer rooms in educational institutions, while the Danish People's Party a right-wing nationalist group now ranking second in parliamentary strength is demanding that immigrants participate in Christmas celebration as a means of demonstrating their integration into Danish society in an effort to uphold Danish cultural norms the town of Randers have requested that pope be served in public school cafeterias in a recent incident a man was charged with blasphemy for posting a video of a burning quran on facebook This particular case highlights the misguided nature of the ongoing debate surrounding Islam in Denmark. The actions of all parties involved, the man who burned the Quran, the prosecutor who brought forth the blasphemy charge, and even advocates of free speech protesting the charges have raised concern. Denmark is not an outlier in grappling with the rise of nativism. This trend extends across Europe and the United States. Despite experiencing relatively minimal Islamist terrorism and a prevailing sense of safety among its citizens, Denmark has harbored deep-seated unease toward Islam for over a decade. This unease was significantly amplified after the Danish newspaper Jyllands Posten published controversial cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in 2005. leading to violent reactions in multiple countries since then the defense for free speech has become both a rallying point and a guise for anti-muslim sentiment the danish people's party has played a prominent role in this movement having staunchly supported jelens posten during the cartoon crisis various members of parties within the current coalition government share similar concerns even the social democrats who historically opposed right-wing anti-immigration policies have formed an alliance with the Danish People's Party while creating a religious text held in high regard by 2 billion Muslims worldwide is unquestionably problematic it goes beyond mere provocation to embody a manifestation of a spiteful political agenda while Islam like an ideology is open to critique such criticism often veils an unsavory form of nationalism that threatens to deepen divisions between Muslims and non-Muslims. Conversely, suppressing free speech is not an effective strategy for countering sectarianism. A recent case of blasphemy is particularly disconcerting, as the charge had lain dormant for decades, and its application in this instance appears highly selective. Notably, an artist who burned a Bible on live television in 1997 faced no prosecution. Past instances also reveal that hate speech convictions have targeted former members of parliament who likened Muslims to Hitler or made claims about Muslim fathers. The Free Press Society, Denmark's largest free speech advocacy organization, was largely established by prominent figures from the Danish People's Party and other critics of Islam. This group contends that anti-blasphemy laws undermine free speech. yet paradoxically seeks to curtail imams from promoting sharia law among other objectives under the guise of safeguarding civil liberties nationalists are co-opting free speech to marginalize minority groups nonetheless regulating speech to quell extremist sentiments is not a viable solution either as it could bluster the nationalist assertion that they are the genuine defenders of individual liberties against elite driven political correctness even narrow concentrates on speech can establish a hazardous precedent potentially becoming potent tools for stifling other political and religious viewpoints in 2013 following an assassination attempt on Lars Hedgard a caricaturist and vocal critic of Islam various muslim groups condemned the attack and defended his right to express his opinions regardless of their offensive nature 
This stance advocating complete openness rather than regulation is the most promising path forward. It is encouraging to witness targeted Muslim groups articulating this viewpoint even when they themselves have been subject to verbal attacks or affronts. Regrettably, there is a shortage of politicians prepared to adopt a similar stance. As we conclude this exploration into the evolving landscape of Islam in Denmark, we hope to have shed light on the complexities and challenges that the country faces in terms of anti-Muslim sentiment and its repercussions. Thank you for joining us in exploring this significant topic and we look forward to bringing you more insightful news in the future. Till then, stay informed, stay connected.